are here with Jody, the Experience Coordinator with Six Nations Tourism to learn all about Haudenosaunee art and culture. Jody, can you tell us about what Six Nations Tourism is all about? For sure. Uh, so we here at Six Nations Tourism promote Haudenosaunee art, culture, language, um, pretty much anything to do with being uh, Ngwehoe. We also provide tours here as well and pretty much just get visitors from everywhere around the world coming here to learn about culture, language, and we just try to do our best to provide that accurately. <laughs> I love that, I love that. Jody. this is the largest populated First Nation community in Ontario, meaning there's a vibrant culture, lots of people, lots of things to explore. What's your favorite part about working here? Everything. I love working here so much. I love the people. I love my history, my culture, my language. Um, just trying to get all that stuff back from just losing so much history and stuff. It's amazing and it makes me feel so awesome just being able to be a part of that as well. Six Nations of the Grand River is called the Grand River for a specific reason. Can you tell us what that is? The Grand River was always a big part of our history. That's why we picked being here in this area when we had to move because we are connected to the land, the river, um, everything that nature has to provide, we're always thankful for. So this is a beautiful and amazing spot to land. You offer some amazing cultural packages here, experiences for everybody. Can you talk, th talk us through some of those packages? Yeah, for sure. Um, we have our Where Cultures Meet, it's one of our most popular, uh, that would have the Mohawk Chapel, uh, Woodland, Chisa National Historic Site, Guyana State Greenhouse, and that kind of just goes over the basic history and it's really just a nice general tour to have. And then we also have more outdoorsy ones for summertime. We have our day of play tour, which is just learning outdoor activities, archery, lacrosse, things like that, and also learning the history as well. Um, and then we also have our on the water tour um, and I give those tours and we just go on the water, do some canoeing and kayaking, learn the history of the Grand River and just pretty much the history of everything around here. So Because of the beautiful location we're in and the multiple activities you offer here, there's probably more than you can do in just one day. So how can we make this a multiple day experience? Where can we stay? So we have tons of accommodations here at Chiswood Park. We have large cabins here, small cabins, glamping huts, and then also just campgrounds. <laughs> and then also just service uh, spots for trailers too. <laughs> so if you don't like camping folks, glamping is the way to go. <laughs> today we're trying to experience a variety of activities. So what is Living Local getting to do today? Um, so today we are going to go over to Everything Corn Husk, going to meet Elizabeth Dockstader. Um, she's going to show us a little bit about their corn husk dolls, and she's an amazing artist, um, one of the best in our community. Um, we're also going to be going to meet Aisha, um, and she's going to be doing a cooking demonstration for us on traditional Haudenosaunee foods, uh, and that should be pretty tasty and fun. <laughs> and then we're also just going to be doing some snowshoeing, which I think we're doing right after this. Amazing. We're here with Jackie Jameson on the banks of the Grand River and it is beautiful out here and we are about to go snowshoeing. So let's do it. All right. Let's get these on. So these ones here are made of metal and plastic, but I'm sure the original snowshoes were made out of different materials. So what were they made out of? Uh, yeah, typically they were made out of wood around the outside and then it would have been raw hide that was weaved in between kind of to make like triangles or diamond shapes. Uh, and the wood would have had to been soaked and then bent to make the actual shape of the snowshoes. So these are very, very modern snowshoes. Because it rained yesterday, it's like so crunchy right now. I know. Jackie, the tagline for the park is where six nations welcomes the world. What does that mean? Well, I think it means that we're very welcome to international visitors from all over the world. We are open, we are here to serve anybody who comes, and we just want people to come and enjoy our culture and our history as much as we do. I love that. Awesome. Well, let's keep walking. <laughs> this was absolutely incredible. I can't even imagine like waking up and coming to work every day, just being surrounded by nature and just being a part of this whole Six Nations crew. 
What's your favorite part about working here? Oh, definitely my favorite part about it is just being able to share my culture with other people and learning about other people's culture. We meet so many people throughout the day and it's just, it's just a great thing. Yeah, I loved it. And there's so much more to come, so. There is. <laughs> Amazing. Our second stop of the day is at Everything Corn Husk, and today we're going to be taking part in a tradition that has happened over thousands of years, and we're here with Elizabeth, who is a corn husk artist. How are you today? I'm good. Tell us a little bit about Everything Corn Husk. Well, Everything Corn Husk is located in Ashwigan at the Village Plaza. It's right beside the post office, and we really try to emphasize the importance of making sure that that ancient art of corn husk doll making is carried on. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the corn husk and how it began? Well, corn husk actually dates back to our creation and they talk about how those three plants uh, that represent our um, jonhequa, our sustenance, uh, grew and um, at that time that husk was there and it protected those kernels on the corn, the original corn, and has protected that uh, corn ever since. So now the husk is used for many things, and one of the things that I use it for is to create dioramas that help protect our stories. Being an artist in this community is so important, and you are one of them. Um, how can we support artists in this community? Well, I, I, there's, there's the, the rule of three A's. Make sure things are authentic. Make sure they, that what is being depicted is accurate and really try to make sure that it's, um, it presents something that is accountable to the community, right? Because a lot of times you run the fear of people who really don't know and they go by the headlines. And there's uh, too often things that are depicted in headlines that don't really represent the full spectrum of who our people are. So we're here sitting at the table ready to begin the craft and we're joined by a member of the community, Celeste. Celeste, how are you? Really good, you? Good, good. Okay. Uh, do you mind telling us how she's connected to the community here? Uh, Celeste is one of the uh, nieces from the community. Uh, she's a, a young artist in our community and she's also a language learner and protector. And so I thought it was important to um, invite someone to come in and um, as basically like a witness. To the culture, of course. Yeah, and just like you mentioned, the three A's being authentic. So thank you for being here, mm -hmm. Celeste. Uh, let's begin this craft. What is the first step to actually learning how to make a corn husk doll? So uh, you're going to pick a piece of a husk, maybe one or two, because there's teachings that are infused into the whole process. So part of it is understanding that husk is a protector. We understand that from our stories. Mm -hmm. The next thing is selecting that husk. And then when you're going to form the head of your doll, you have a good mind, right? So it reminds us of that, that it's important that you use that compassion and kindness and love and respect always while you're doing this. We're going to make the, the head of the doll. Okay. So you take that and I'll, I'll grab a piece too. I'm in a good headspace right now. So this is a good time to be doing this. So you wrap it around two times. Oh, two times. Yeah. And nothing magical about the number two. That's just my, that just makes my it, little thing. Yeah. yeah. And then you pull it really tight, pull it tight, and then you tie it, and then you tie it again. And we're going to take this, and we're going to take this husk that you just had, and we're going to twist it around. And it's just going to keep going around. Try to twist it as tight as you can. I think I'm going to end up with someone with a big head. <laughs> so squish them together. Squish is a technical term. So that you have your husk pretty compacted like that. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take this husk that's on the top and you're going to pull it over. Wrapping it with the... Yeah. Um, let me... Let me <laughs> not doing a good job. Let me take that for a minute. <laughs> you hold this one. And now you can use that string and tie it around to form the neck. You have to have such strong fingers for this. I feel like my fingers are already very sore. Pick out a piece of husk and you split it in half like this. And then after you split it in half, you reverse one. Uh, I'm going to tie a piece of string around one end. Uh, so this forms the wrist. And then we braid them. So 
So this is going to be his or her hands. And then I'm going to tie it in a knot and then tie it in another knot so that that's the wrists and this is like goes inside the body oh, nice. so that your hands are going to be even. So you match those up and then you trim it. There you go, we got our arms to our doll. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to take it and on the side like that, I'm going to split it and so that when I put the arms in there, ah. they face the right way. Okay, like that. I see. I'm, wait, in, down the middle, right? Right here? Okay, cool. I was, I was like, how do I split this? Okay, so the okay. body is right there. Right. So now we're going to go a little uh, project one way here. And we're going to design a dress for her. <gasps> Yay! Put on clothing. So we're going to take a piece and we're going to Whoa. split it like that. That was cool. So now you're going to put that over her shoulders. <laughs> So with this part of it, because you're forming the bottom of her where she connects to the earth, mm -hmm. it reminds us of our responsibility to the earth. We're putting on her Ajatawi dress. Okay. Okay, that is so cool. Check it out. quite an appetite after a long day with Six Nations Tourism and I am excited to eat. We are here at the Gathering Place by the Grand with Aisha. Aisha, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you? So excited to get cooking and eating some authentic Indigenous food. Can yeah. you tell us about your passion for cooking? Yes, it started when I was five. I love to eat. My family's big family meal people. So I grew up in the kitchen with all my aunts, my grandmas. Uh, that's where I learned the gossip and also how to cook. Ayesha, one of the traditional indigenous foods is called the Three Sisters Soup. Can you tell us the story of the Three Sisters? Yeah, of course. So the Three Sisters came down from the sky world and it's corn, beans, and squash. And they all live symbiotically together and it's also a representation of Haudenosaunee people and how we function as a culture. So the corn grows super high, the beans grow up the stalks, and then the squash lays low so that helps kill off any weeds. It also keeps moisture in the ground. And then the corn puts nutrients back into the soil because um, those vegetables do deplete the soil. So they work symbiotically together to maintain a healthy relationship with each other. I love that the community thrives on storytelling. It's such an important part of your culture. Can you tell us about your passion for cooking and why it's so important to mix your passion of cooking with your culture? Yes. Um, like I said, I grew up cooking and through colonization, our foods and ways of life were tried to be destroyed. Um, so this is my way of helping our community bring it back. And we believe that food is medicine. So every food that we have, we have a lot of respect for it. There's ceremonies for them. And I'm also half North African as well. So I like to put both of my cultures in my food and all of my love goes into it. And it's very important to use pre-contact indigenous ingredients, but I like to make it the way that I like to make it. Yeah, you add your special Aisha touch. Exactly. All right, so I'm, you know, I'm excited to eat. We can talk about food all we want, but I think it's time to get to cooking and okay. learning about it firsthand by getting our hands messy. Sounds Let's good. Do it. Let's go. We 
We've got some fun veggies here and we're ready to get cooking. What's on the menu for today? So we're gonna do some roasted veg, a blueberry chimichurri, a charred light corn salad, and moose steaks. Wow, okay. So we're gonna start with this because this will take the longest to cook. Okay. We're gonna chop it up, clean out the seeds, throw it in the oven, and just move through. Love it, let's okay. do it. So you can start by seeding these. Okay. And I find it's the easiest way to use a spoon. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So I like to indigenize the meals that I make. So the chimichurri is Argentinian, but I put blueberries in it because those are from here. Ah, okay. We're not using cool. beef steaks, we're using moose steaks. Yeah. So that's a wild game. Got it. So we're gonna put these in the oven at 400 until they're done. All right, now we're on to recipe number two, which is the charred corn salad. Mm -hmm. How do we make it? So we have some fresh tomatoes, red onion, lime, garlic, avocado. We're gonna chop these up, put them in a bowl, some salt, pepper, a little olive oil, and then we're gonna dry, dry fry these. And that's how you get the char, so it's not frying them, but right. it's getting the color. Me too, it's my favorite. I actually have eaten it raw in chunks. You keep the fork in there and squeeze at the oh. same time and Ooh, twist. It got in my eyes. Oh no. <laughs> okay, I'll give you the other That's half. That's good. <laughs> That's not working for me. So we're just gonna let this set until we start to smell some charring happening. And then we'll assemble the salad all the way once the corn cools down because the heat will disrupt the situation we have right here. Cool. Now for the blueberry chimichurri. Mm -hmm. This one looks delicious. More yes. colors. Super fresh. Super fresh. A lot of nutrients, lot vitamins. Of nutrients. All right, so how do we make this one? So we start with chopping up our parsley. We want it to be super fine, but this is red pepper flakes, dried oregano, garlic, our blueberries, red wine vinegar, some olive oil, salt and pepper. That's everything that goes into it. Food is medicine. So that's why I like to incorporate tons of fruits and veg and um, nice fresh herbs. The last part of the meal, mm -hmm. the mousse. Yes. And we're ready to grill it up. Yeah. So there's just a little bit of salt, pepper, olive oil, and a couple of dry herbs, cumin, dried onion, couple of things like that. And it was just soaked in there? It was marinating for a while, yeah. Nice. It's a part of our culture too. You go out and you go hunt and it's not just for yourself, it's not just for your own family. You share it, you give it to the longhouse and it's for the community as well. Right. I've never had fresh raspberry juice before and this is so exciting. Everything looks so good. <laughs> my eyes are just ready to yes. feast. My All eyes right. are ready to feast. My mouth is ready to feast and my eyes are just like, wow, this looks so good. Okay. All right. Eat. Eat, please. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hard corn salad with the avocado and lime. Mm. That garlic is hitting me right in the face. <laughs> mm. And finally, the mousse. First time eating mousse. Mm. Mm. Blueberries just popped in my mouth. <laughs> I 
Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna wash it down with some fresh raspberry juice. Yes, do it. Here we go. What a meal. I need to finish up my plate. So uh, I'll see you a little bit later. <laughs>